Baltimore. It is tackled. The Baltimore Ravens are Super Bowl champions. It's over. The Bucks have done it. The long wait has ended after a half century. The Milwaukee Bucks are NBA champions once again. Hey, what is up, everybody? I'm going to totally do a little draft recap for you guys here. Um, if you guys didn't know, obviously my main like stuff that I do on this channel is obviously sports betting and stuff like that, but I'm actually in school to be a sports broadcaster. I love talking football. I love talking the NBA. Sports broadcasting is what I've always wanted to do ever since I graduated high school. Um, I got a degree in mass communications and stuff like that so I can help prolong that career, and that's kind of what I wanted to turn this into down the line. So I really want to just like talk about um, the first round of the NFL draft was just last night. Super exciting stuff. A lot of teams did really well. Um, only a, like not even a handful. Just a few teams um, didn't didn't play or didn't pick very well yesterday. Not very many though. But a lot of teams really killed it. Um, I really want to emphasize this Ravens for sure. Um, and that's not even me just being biased with my. Obviously, I'm a Ravens fan. I'm not being super biased with this at all. I think that the Ravens absolutely a plus it. I mean, I don't know how the Ravens landed the players that they landed. It's actually scary that the league allowed this to happen when you really think about it there are so many draft boards that had um you know really elite scouts you know these guys that they literally all they do the entire year is just get ready for the draft they had kyle hamilton top five and like literally every single one of these mock drafts had kyle hamilton a top five pick or a top five player in this draft and unanimously unanimously hands down the best safety in the draft he falls all the way to 14 to Baltimore. No way in the world, right? Going into it, I was like, I want Sauce Gardner, I want Derek Stingley, or I want Kyle Hamilton. Those were my, that's who I really wanted, right? Um, there's obviously some other players that if we would have took out, I would have been fine with, but those are the three guys we really needed. I personally really wanted the Ravens to take a defensive back. We needed one so bad, based upon what you guys saw last year. Um, I mean, obviously we lost everybody last year, so... Um, you can't have a team with that much depth to have to need to have six extra corners laying around on the roster. But um, we still needed help in the secondary because it's the AFC. And the AFC has Patrick Mahomes, Justin Herbert, Russell Wilson now, Josh Allen. Like, you have to have a secondary in the AFC. You have to have guys to be able to cover all the weapons that are in the AFC, like Tyreek Hill and um, Jalen Waddle and all those kind of guys. Like, I mean, that's just so many weapons. Tyreek, I just said Tyreek, Tyreek, Jalen Waddle. Uh, Keenan Allen, Mike Williams, all those guys. Those are so many weapons in the AFC that you have to worry about. And I mean, now Deshaun Watson is also ad added to the AFC. So we just needed so much um, in the secondary because it's going to be a pass-heavy AFC for the next couple of years. Even though the AFC North led the, NF led the NFL, the AFC North led the NFL last year in total rush yards, I still think it's going to be a heavy... Once you get later into the season, it's going to be a whole lot of passing. So we needed a, a corner so bad. And Stingley and, and uh, Sauce went back to back, bang, bang, 3-4. And I was like, well, great. Because no one was really anticipating them to go that high, like bang, bang, right off the back like that. And so I was like, okay, well, those two guys went, went bang, bang right away, right? And so I was like, ah, you know, it is what it is. We weren't going to land those guys anyways. We were going to have to trade up, and we really didn't have anything to trade up, um, to trade up with anyways. And then, you know, the draft keeps playing out, keeps playing out. I'm looking at the, you know, we're getting into the teens picks. And I'm like, all right, who are these guys going to take? You know, do these guys need a corner? Do these guys need Kyle Hamilton? And then the wide receivers just stopped flying off the board. And nine trades were happening yesterday in the first round. Breaks the NFL record. Everyone was just flying up. They're like, oh, shoot, there goes Drake London. Oh, there goes Garrett Wilson. Oh, there goes Chris Olave. I mean, everybody's just flying off the board. Everyone's trying to trade up. They're like, oh, no, no, no. The, the Lions are like, let me get Jameson Williams. They trade up and... The, the the wide receivers are just flying off the board, flying off the board, and it's just taking another team off, taking another team off, taking another team off, and then boom, we get up to uh, the, the Vikings. And the Vikings, you have to think that if the Vikings didn't trade their pick, they were absolutely going to take Kyle Hamilton, and they trade it. And they trade it away to the New Orleans Saints, if I'm not mistaken. And then the, and then the New Orleans Saints, they go um, wide receiver, and then, then the Eagles uh, moved up as well. And then the Eagles took Jordan Davis, which if it wasn't Kyle Hamilton, you have to think the Ravens were probably going to take Jordan Davis anyways. That's what a lot of mock drafts had the Ravens taking. So as soon as I seen Jordan Davis pop up on that screen, I went, please get Kyle Hamilton. Please get Kyle Hamilton. Thinking deep down inside. I mean, he's obviously the best player available. And the Ra and Eric DaCosta said 
uh, in an interview earlier in the week, he was, they were going to take the best available player. And uh, sure enough, they took Kyle Hamilton. Um, and then moments after, it's, it, I posted on my YouTube, um, it's from, a, from the video yesterday, moments, literally moments, like as soon as they announced a pick, like two seconds later, they were like, oh, by the way, the Ravens just traded Marquise Brown to the Cardinals for their 23rd pick. And I was like, dude, like the, the fan in me hurts a lot because I literally have both of Hollywood's jerseys in my, in my closet, his 15 and his five. Um, loved Hollywood Brown as a fan. When it comes down to it, he was inconsistent. Uh, same reason why they got rid of Jacoby Jones a couple years ago. Explosive playmaker, great guy to have on your team. Just inconsistent, right? I'm sure um, Eric DaCosta talked about it afterwards. The front office talked about it afterwards in the, in the post-draft uh, post draft press conference. Hollywood was going to want a bag. He was going to want a lot of money. Every single wide receiver that's a free agent this year wants a bag. I mean, Debo wants the bag. A.J. Brown, the whole reason he got traded is because the Titans were going to give him um, a lot of lettuce, and he wants a lot of it. He wanted a lot of lettuce, and they weren't just going to give it. Uh, the Ravens, they got to pay Lamar in, in the next, you know, either this year by May 2nd, or they've got to pay him next year, right, if they, if, uh, if they decide to pick up his fifth-year option. Fifth year option. So, obviously, they're trying to cl clear cap space for that, right? And we just signed Marcus Williams to a pretty big deal. Um, so, when it came down to it, was it, you, are you going to take money away from Lamar Jackson to sign Hollywood Brown, a guy who's been really inconsistent, he's been injured a lot, he's been up and down, he's had great games, he's had bad games, he's dropped a lot of big passes. Small guy, small, quick, but like I said, he gets injured a lot. Is he a true number one wide receiver? No, not really, right? So when you come down to it, the business side of it was you trade him, you don't have to pay him. You trade him or he just walks, right? So now we trade him to Arizona. Now Arizona either pays him or he walks, right? But then we get draft capital out of it. We get a 23rd pick in the draft. And then so that made me think, you know, it sucks a lot, right? I, I the Ravens, historically, the Ravens are really good at drafting, right? It, the one position, and I, when I look back and I think about all the years I've been a Ravens fan, the one position the Ravens have just always struggled to draft is wide receivers for some reason. We've drafted elite running backs, Ray Rice. We've drafted elite fullbacks, Vontae Leach and like uh, Patrick Ricard, right? We've drafted um, uh, even J.K. Dobbins. He's going to be elite. Gus Edwards, he's elite. Um, we've drafted great offensive linemen. I don't even have to name them. We've named, we've drafted so many great offensive linemen. Todd Heat, Mark Andrews, um, Dennis Pitta. We've drafted amazing tight ends, uh, quarterbacks, you know, Joe Flacco, Lamar Jackson now. We've drafted great quarterbacks. Quarterbacks has really never been a problem um, since Jared Hobbers came, al came along uh, for the Ravens. Even And then don't even get me started with the defensive side of the ball, right? Mylon Humphrey. Um, Ed Reed, Ray Lewis, Terrell, you know, all those kind of guys, Haloti Nada, all those guys. We've, we've drafted every single position on the field fantastically, but we just haven't been able to nail a wide receiver in such a long time. And the last time we did was probably Torrey Smith. Honestly, that was the last time we drafted a guy that actually made a huge impact and was really a solid receiver for us. And Torrey Smith, and then we let him walk. We let Torrey Smith walk. Same, kind of the same scenario that happened with Hollywood. And so we get Hollywood Brown and he really just wasn't living up to probably what the organization wanted. Um, like I said, he was dropping a lot of passes, really injured a lot, inconsistent kind of player. So it made a lot of sense, um, it, and we continue to struggle with the wide receiver position. I kind of wish that the Ravens organization last year – now there's a lot of talk and a lot of hype inside the Ravens facilities that Rashad Bateman is having an amazing offseason – uh, and he really didn't get his feet under him last year because he was, like, injured. They put him on the pup list last year, which if you're on the pup list, the physically unable to perform list, at the beginning of the season, you have to sit out the first six weeks. So we only got, like, three quarters of the season. Um, and he was kind of in and out of the rotation a little bit. But in, in the moments he got, he kind of shined a little bit. He played really well. Um, but apparently he's been training a lot this offseason with um, with Lamar. They've been posting videos all over the Internet and stuff about that. And, uh, the front office has said he's had a, in a great offseason. So who knows? You know, maybe Rashad Bateman ends up being a really good uh, wide receiver this season for us. He's going to have to be now because he's the, he's the one now that Hollywood has gone and Sammy Watkins. So um, hopefully, I wish that the, that the organization, that's what I was saying, last year would have said, okay, maybe we don't take Bateman this year because the, la the draft class next year is so loaded and next year we try to trade up because, I mean, if we would have got Garrett Wilson, Chris Olave, Traylon Burks, Jamison Williams, any of those guys, right? If we would have got any of those wide receivers, that would have been a great addition to this offense, um, especially if you guys wanted to trade Hollywood the whole time, right? Um, because if you guys didn't know, they also talked about that in the post-draft in the post uh, post draft 
press conference was that um, this was in the works for a while. Um, Hollywood was already frustrated with the organization and stuff like that. They'd been talking about it. Um, he was at the Arizona draft party tonight. Um, he posted a video of him and Kyler working out. They, he posted like this whole thing on Instagram. They've, they've already been working out and stuff like that. So he already knew he was going to Arizona. They, they made the deal a couple days ago, earlier in the week. Um, but they didn't, they waited to announce it till tonight. But, uh, yeah, Hollywood's already been over there. Um, Lamar Jackson did know, um, I know he's kind of, he showed frustration on Twitter and stuff like that, but, uh, Eric DeCosta and stuff like they said that they talked to Lamar. Lamar knew it was going to happen, but I'm sure actually seeing it happen kind of, you know, obviously frustrated him a lot. Um, he's he's going to stay a Ra like people saying like he's going to leave the Ravens stuff like that. No, he's not going to leave the Ravens just because. I mean, he lost his best friend when it comes down to it. Uh, him and Hollywood were really close, so it's a bummer at the end of the day. But you have to look at the bright side of it, right? And uh, we got Tyler Lindenbaum and the same kind of same situation with Kyle Hamilton. Kyle Hamilton was a top five projected um, uh, like player in a lot of people's mock drafts. Then he runs a bad 40. He runs like a 4.59 40 or something like, like a 4.640. 40. And he plummeted on everybody's, uh, uh, on everybody's board just because he ran a bad 40 um, for some reason. And so that made him fall and that made him plummet to us. Same story with Tyler Lindenbaum. Tyler Lindenbaum is the number one ranked unanimous center in the draft. And uh, a lot of people said he would have been top five lineman. He would have been up there with um, Charles Cross and uh, Evan Neal if he was two inches taller and had an uh, inch and a half longer wingspan. He's a smaller center, which people like to have bigger centers. And so his size is what stopped a lot of teams from drafting him earlier because they, a lot, I mean, you talk to professional offensive linemen scouts, they said he was the best off, he, he was the best run blocker, best pass blocker. He had all of the credentials. He just, he was a great communicator. When you have a center, you have to have a center that's got great communication. Obviously, he's out of Iowa, too. I, Iowa makes, uh, produces dogs at the offensive line position. He just wasn't big enough. He didn't pass the eye test for a lot of people. So, um, I think it was the same scenario. We even traded back, right? Because we didn't take, um, we didn't take him at 23. We took him at 25. We traded with the Bills. The Bills went up. Um, so we took him at 25. I still think it's a great pick. Um, when they when they traded Hollywood and we got that pick, I was like, okay, cool. Don't necessarily know who we're going to go after now because uh, A.J. Brown got traded a few picks before us, and then they took Traylon Burke. So they're, all those big guys, uh, right, those big star studded wide receivers were off the board already. So I was like, I'll be interested to see what we do here. And then I thought about it. I was like, oh, yeah, Tyler Linder, mom, wouldn't be a bad option. And sure enough, that's what we ended up doing. Um, so that leaves... Tomorrow, um, or I guess technically today, uh, round two leaves it very interesting for us because now round two comes rolling along and you got to think, okay, now now we have to address Hollywood, right? There's no way. We have to take another wide receiver somewhere. Um, you can't get rid of Hollywood and then not replace it. Um, even though uh, they were talking in the post-conference presser as well that uh, there's still guys available in free agency, which means I think they're still maybe like shopping around like a Julio Jones or something like that. Um, gives me some optimism for that. Also, a lot of people think that now with the Hollywood move that we could trade for DK, or not DK, uh, Debo. I mean, the 49ers have already said they want five draft picks for him. I think they're delusional thinking they're gonna get five picks for Debo, but I also don't wanna deal with that with Debo. Same story why I didn't want Antonio Brown either. I don't want to deal with that drama. Like, the Ravens are not a toxic place, and I don't want toxic people to come in. Um, and I don't know. I just We don't have necessarily the pieces I think that the 49ers want. We're not going to give up five draft picks for Debo Samuel, and then we have to pay him next year. We're not going to do that. Um, so I don't think Debo Samuel is an option. When you look at second-round wide receivers that they could possibly snag, uh, I think we got, like, pick 34. Not 34. Uh, let me double check real quick. We got a pretty early second rounder, though. Um, but when you're thinking about um, wide receivers that are going to be in that second round range for the Baltimore Ravens, George Pickens, um, John Mechie. If we could get John Mechie, I'd be, I would be so ecstatic if we could get John Mechie. Uh, let's see here. Uh, 45. So not too deep into the second round here. Um Looking at other teams that could possibly take a wide receiver right um, up in that early picks. So um, Tennessee Titans took their wide receiver. Giants took their wide receiver. Texans could very easily take a wide receiver. Uh, Jets took their wide receiver. Uh, Bears could take a wide receiver because they just lost Allen Robinson, right? Uh, Seattle Seahawks have back-to-back 41-40. -back um, they could definitely probably take a wide receiver with one of those two picks. 
Um, I think the Colts wouldn't take one. Falcons aren't going to go double down on a wide receiver. Uh, there's uh, You could think about the Browns taking a wide receiver with their first pick in the draft, but I, I think there's other areas they could probably address besides the wide receiver because they already added Mamari Cooper, right? So just a handful of teams, and then it's, and then it's the Ravens. So just a handful of teams that I think um, could maybe steal something from us there. But really, I mean, I could see the Ravens not wanting to go John Mechie because they just took Hollywood Brown a couple years ago. They took the small, quick guy, right? We see how that played out. It didn't really play out well, right? So I, I, I really am not, I'm not even just saying this for the, for the, I don't, I don't know how you would like say it, the fan, the fan guy in me talking about this. George Pickens just makes a lot of sense to me. Um, the last time we had a big physical wide receiver, I mean, the George Pickens pick would be an Anquan Bolden like pick, right? The last time the Ravens had an elite passing offense was back, you know, in 2012 with Joe Flacco and Anquan Bolden and Torrey Smith and those guys, right? Those were bigger receivers, more physical wide receivers, more guys that Joe Flacco could just kind of, top, you know, put it upstairs for. And George Pickens is that guy for sure. He obviously he fell way off the radar this year because of all the injuries and stuff like that. Um, there's also, give me just a uh, second. Um, um, there's this one kid. Oh, give me just a second. Best available NFL. Um, there's a wide receiver out of, he's out of a D2 school. He's out of um, that North Dakota State School. Um, let me see if I can try to find him real quick. Oh, yeah. Also, Andrew Bo uh, Booth is still available if we wanted to double down on corner. Um, I don't think we'd do something like that, but we could. Uh, he's still available as well. Um, but give me just a second. Also been talks about us taking that uh, an edge rusher, um, uh, Boye Mafe from Michigan. Uh, or excuse me, Minnesota has been a guy that's kind of been talked about because I know a lot of people are wanting us to go after um, a pass rusher, which I, I get, uh, of course, I agree with that. I, I'm, I'm okay with whatever at this point, really. Uh, Sky Moore is another receiver that um, that's up there for us to also take. Also, uh, another one of those smaller guys, though. He's only 5'10", 195. Um, okay, here he is. Christian Watson, 6'4", 208 pounds, ran a 4'36". He's at a North Dakota State, an athletic freak. He had an 11'4 broad jump and a 4'36 combine 40. Didn't know who he was, obviously, right? Because he plays D2 football. He's an absolute monster. Christian Watson, if you guys want to look him up after. Him and George Pickens are two solid guys um, if we wanted to go the bigger wide receiver route, right? Because we have bigger wide receivers on the roster, right? Rashad Bateman's not a bad size. Um, we took Miles Boykin. He's still on the roster. Miles Boykin's a bigger guy. Um, I could totally see the Ravens going bigger um, and going, hey, you know, we tried the whole small receiver thing. Didn't really work out, so let's go with the big guy. I could definitely see them doing that, and, and it makes a lot of sense to me because back when we used to have an elite pass game, it was with Anquan Bolden, it was with Derek Mason, it was with uh, Torrey Smith. Those guys were bigger receivers, right? They took the Steve Smith route, right? Steve Smith was a small, quick guy, quick, explosive guy. <coughs> Worked back then with Joe, Joe Flacco a little bit better towards the end of Joe and Steve's career here. Um, but George Pickens, 6'3", 195, bigger receiver. Um, Sky Moore is a smaller one out of Western Michigan. And then this Christian Watson kid. So I would love it if we got either Christian Watson or George Pickens. Um, obviously, we've got to address it somehow. Um, and I think if we don't take these two guys in the second round, uh, or take one of these guys in the second round, uh, our next pick won't be till uh, 76. So none of those two players are going to be available at 76. So we've really got to make a smart decision here at 45 as far as if we wait that long into the draft for a wide receiver, it's just not going to be there, right? And I feel like there's definitely probably going to be pass rushers available um, that deep into the draft. You find pass rushers like that all the time that deep into the draft. So, um, And Eric DeCosta talked about how they've been really looking deep into this draft. They have five fourth-round picks. So they're looking really deep into this draft. Um, so I have a feeling that whatever they take down deep into the draft, they're going to have a they're going to be great players for us as far as whatever they else – whatever holes that they feel like they need to fill there. Um, but man, I would love it if we could fill it, fill it up with a young, exciting wide receiver. Um, a guy we wouldn't have to pay for four more years is exactly why we'd get rid of Hollywood Brown. Um, but with that being said, I think I might 
throw up a live stream when we get close to the Ravens pick um, tonight. Uh, I do have work, so I, I, just depending on how long it takes to get to the Ravens pick, we can see on that one. But I'd love to record it uh, or do like a live stream and record my reaction for when we get close to my pick or the Ravens pick. Um, but with that being said, guys, I just kind of wanted to kind of just, I don't, I don't even want to say briefly because this ended up, ended up being 20 minutes long, but I just wanted to talk about the Ravens pick. I feel like it was, the Ravens killed it. They crushed it. Absolutely crushed it. I haven't been this excited about a rookie draft class for us in pff, a while. I mean, obviously when, when the Ravens drafted Lamar Jackson, I was ecstatic. I'll never forget the day, the time where I was when the Ravens drafted Lamar Jackson. Um, but I'm pretty, I'm pretty stoked about this one. Um, Kyle Hamilton. Ed Reed is the whole reason why I became a Baltimore Ravens fan and why I even started playing football in general. Um, I was a big, big time uh, a soccer player when I was a younger kid, and I fell in love with Ed Reed, and I fell in love with Todd Heap when I was younger. So I love defense and free safety. I played free safety when I was in high school. My nickname in, in, uh, in when I played football was Ed Reed because I was a, a you know ball hawking safety like he was as well. But um, this everything about Kyle Hamilton screams Ed Reed to me. Not necessarily as much of a ball hawk, drop back kind of guy. Kyle Hamilton kind of is more like a Derwin James, like a Sean Taylor, right? He kind of plays up more in the box a little bit. Uh, but he can still definitely drop back and play coverage. Um, but I have a feeling I'm going to become a massive Kyle Hamilton fan right out the gate. And I am I'm a huge into drafting a line. I think it's massive. I think drafting a line is it's so important. Um, it's just it makes your pass game better, obviously, because it gives your quarterback time to pass. You, you become a better running team, running the ball when you have the lead, it runs the clock out. I'm huge into drafting oh, offensive line, so I love the Linderbaum pickup. Uh, the Ravens had a lot of fluctuation up front last year for sure with offensive linemen because of all the injuries and stuff like that. We already have an All Pro in Ronnie Stanley once he comes back. Um, so I really like what the Ravens did yesterday. It has me really excited. I can't wait till Hamilton touches the field. Um, but yeah, with that being said, guys, just thought I'd kind of give an overview of how I felt about yesterday, and hopefully we can do continue to have a lot of success into these next couple of rounds. Uh, but that being said, I will catch you guys tomorrow. Peace.